Hello students. So this video is on the kinetic molecular theory in gas laws. Um, it is very similar to the physics section that we were doing. So um, I think a lot of you guys will be really good at this. So this is kinetic molecular theory. Um, we just say KMT for short. So we should already know what these words mean. Kinetic means movement, right, or energy in motion. And then molecular means a molecule. So overall, this theory just means molecules that are moving. So a little swooshy guy here. Um, so this whole thing is all about how gases are interacting Um, so there's four different postulates that are part of this. It's like a theory, right? So first thing is that particles are so small that we assume that their volume is going to be equal to zero. So they still have a container volume. Um, like a jug or something, but the actual particles, we don't count their volume. Okay, second thing is that the pressure, um, and you guys already have this definition again, it's just part of the, um, part of the theory. So pressure is when um, there are collisions of particles with the walls. And you guys should see that, right? The more, um, the, the smaller a container is, the more it's going to hit the walls and the more pressure there's going to be. Um, and every time that this makes a collision, they actually will not lose energy. Um, in the real world, that's not actually true, um, but this is just a theory um, that we use to understand how gases work. Okay, fourth thing is that particles don't attract or repel each other. Um, this one's also not true in the real world, um, but it's really hard to study gases that are so tiny without it. And last thing, also already in your notes, um, is that temperature is the average kinetic energy. So it's how fast things are moving, right? If they are hot, they're moving really fast, um, or if they're cold, they're moving really slow. Uh, the pressure and temperature, two and five, you should already have written down somewhere. Um, it's just an important part of this theory. So we're just going to make a little chart here, um, and this will be um, the variables we're going to be using in the equation, what symbol they have in the equation, and then what are the units on them. Um, like I said, this is very similar to our physics unit, so I think a lot of you guys will do well. So the first thing is moles. Um, we haven't really talked a whole lot about moles, um, but the symbol is going to be N, and the unit is going to be the mole. Um, it's basically just like a measurement of how much stuff you have, so very similar to like a mass for that one. Okay, uh, then we're going to have volume, which is going to be V. Its units will be milliliters or liters, just like a liter of pop. We're going to have pressure, which symbol for pressure is going to be P. And I gave you some of these before. Um, the units on pressure can be a lot of different things. It can be TOR, ATMs, KPAs, or even MMHG, which stands for millimeters of mercury. Oh, I guess that G just wants to look like that. Um, and then the last thing is the temperature. And temperature is going to be T, and it absolutely has to be measured in Kelvin. Okay, um, so this is going to be your first equation of many today. So if you get something in degrees Celsius, you always have to add 273 to it to get Kelvin. Okay, so in all the questions, when it gives you Celsius, automatically got to go to Kelvin. Um, so keep that chart handy when you're doing these questions, because um, we're going to be labeling things with all those different letters later. All right, so now I'm going to give you all the different gas laws. Um, these are equations. You will always get these on like a test or something. Um, so first one is Boyle's law. And this is that we have P1, V1, 
is equal to P2 V2. Um, and so this relationship just means that pressure and volume are related. If pressure goes up, volume goes down. Um, and we can see this um, on like the simulation. If you make a really, really small container or like squish a balloon, you can feel the pressure kind of building up in the balloon. Okay, the next one is Charles's law. And this is gonna be V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. Um, and this one's a really easy example to think of. Um, how are volume and temperature related? Um, think of a basketball, right? Think of a basketball. If you leave some kind of ball outside, the temperature is going to get cold. Your ball is going to deflate. It'll lose that volume. Um, and then pressure and volume are opposites, right? So once you squish a balloon, you are making it smaller but increasing the pressure. Okay, well, there's going to be a bunch of these laws. Um, so the next one, uh, this guy's name is Gay-Lussac's law. And that is P1 over T1 is equal to P2 over T2. Um, and this relationship basically is if the pressure goes up, the temperature goes up. So when things get really, really hot, they move really fast, and therefore they hit the walls of a container more, so there's more pressure. Then we have Avogadro's law. His law is V1 over N1 is equal to V2 over N2. Uh, this one's kind of like blowing up a balloon. If I add particles, which is moles, then I'm going to make the balloon bigger. So the volume's going to go up. Okay, two more. Um, I know there's a lot of these, um, all these different ones. So this one is the combined gas law. Basically, they just took all of those ones above it and put it all together. So I get P1, V1 over N1, T1 is equal to P2, V2 over N2, T2. Um, this could also be written without the moles. So um, basically, same thing, just no N on the bottom. Um, so what's really key about this one um, is that it's literally, it has all the different things in it. So these kinds of questions, um, you're going to use this equation when you have two of each of the variables. So you're going to have two pressures, two volumes, um, two temperatures, a bunch of different things in the question. Last one. Um, this is called the ideal gas law. It is probably the most famous. It is PV is equal to NRT. Um, it's also known as PIVNERT, affectionately. Um, so this is going to be when you have one of each of the variables. So this one just has one P, one V, one N, one T. Now if you notice here, there's something weird here. There's also an R. Um, that is a constant. It's called the ideal gas law constant. Um, it is always equal to 0 0.0821. That is just always what it's going to be. It is a constant. All right, so let's look at some of these um, just example questions. I'm going to walk through some of them. Um, I always label everything in the question. So it says you have a volume of 2.5 liters. That's going to be your V1 and a pressure of 740 torr which is P1, those ones are going to go together. <clears throat> it says what volume, so that's going to be our V2, we don't know, does the gas occupy at a pressure of 800 torr, so that's going to be P2. And it tells us the temperature is held constant, so that doesn't matter. Um, so when looking at all your different equations, um, we're looking for things that have both P's and V's in it. So that's either going to be Boyle's Law or the Combined Gas Law. Um, we don't have any temperatures, um, so that means it has to be Boyle's Law because we don't have temperature, so we have to use this one. Okay, so we're going to take P1, V1 is equal to P2, V2. And we're just going to plug in numbers here. Um, so the pressure is 740 torr. V1 is 2.5. Uh, P2 is at 800 and then V2. So this is just algebra. This is just like the physics unit we had. Um, we just have to solve this. So we're going to multiply 740 by 2.5. 
on the left side there. And that's going to give us 1850. And that's going to equal 800 V2. We got to get the V by itself, so divided by 800. So V2, which is just like second volume, is equal to 2.3 liters. And that's it. Okay, let's look at the next one. Um, so this one gives us a volume of 2.5, a temperature of 25 degrees, so that's T1. It wants to know what volume will it occupy, so it's looking for V2 again, and it gives us a T2. Now, when we see this, these temperatures, do you remember? We do not want Celsius, okay? We need to add 273 to both of these to put them into Kelvin, because Celsius just does not work. Okay, so we're going to take 25 degrees Celsius, we're going to add 273 to it, and that's going to be 298, and that's going to be Kelvin, that is T1. We got to do the same thing for T2, so we're going to take that 95 degrees Celsius, add 273 to it, and that'll give us 368 Kelvin, that's going to be T2. So we have V's and T's. So let's look at our equations and see what our options are. Okay, so looking at this, um, the, the one that has V's and T's in it is Charles's law, so we're gonna use that one. Um, it's not gonna be the combined gas law because we don't have any pressure, so it can't be the combined gas law. So we're gonna take V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. So I'm just plugging in our numbers for V1 and T1. Make sure you use the Kelvin one, not the Celsius one. Just plugging in some numbers. Okay, now to solve this, um, I think most people are comfortable doing the cross, multiply, and divide. So let's do that. So I'm going to take 2.5 and multiply it by 368. So that's going to be 920 is equal to 298 V2. We're going to divide by 298 to get the V2 by itself. So our final volume is going to be 3.09 liters. All right, uh, this will be the last example that I'm going to do, this number three. So this is a volume one, um, 3.2 ATMs, that's a pressure. And then 25 degrees Celsius is a temperature. Again, it is in Celsius, so I'm just going to add 273 to it right away. So we get 298 Kelvin. And it wants to know what's the mole, so what is N? So we have 1P, 1V, 1T, 1N. So looking at our equations, um, none of the top ones have any of, have all that stuff in there. Um, it can either be the combined gas law or the ideal gas law. Um, it has to be the ideal gas law because we don't have more than one um, pressure here. Okay, there's only one pressure, there's only one volume, so it has to be the ideal gas law. All right, so PV is equal to NRT. So I'm just going to plug in the numbers, so pressure volume. We are looking for moles, so that's N. R is a constant. It's always going to be 0 0.821, and then the temperature is 298. Um, so this is just algebra, right? So um, I'm going to multiply the two numbers on the left side and get 11.39 is equal to N. I'm going to multiply the two numbers on the right side. So n times 24.465. Okay, um, we have to divide by that 24 uh, to get the n by itself. So n is equal to 0.2. And that's going to be moles.